All right, John 21. <sighs> Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. There's a super scene in the, in the show The Chosen about this. I think they do it out of order, but it's still a super good scene. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning, coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. It's weird how it says the number of fish. Were there 153 fish? That's super weird. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw them, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. That is it. That's all of John. Here were two devotional parts in here. One is called The Real Jesus and one is called Making History. Let's read the real Jesus and then be done. All right, it says read John 20, 11 through 31. We already did. Imagine savoring, imagine Jesus savoring boiled fish for breakfast. See his face light up as he delights in a child's antics. Observe him as he keeps the party going, turning water at a wedding into choice wine. 
This is the human Jesus, a man who cried, laughed, slept, conversed, and shared affection freely. Few knew Jesus's personal habits like his 12 disciples, and John, whom Jesus called beloved, may have known him best of all. As an insider, John offers an up-close view of seven of Jesus's miracles and shares the compelling details of Jesus's death and resurrection. After all of these real-life stories, John is quick to admit that Jesus did many more miracles, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Trust me, John seems to say, I knew him, I loved him, I watched him do miracles, die, and come back to life again. Jesus is God's son. He proved it. Though we cannot walk beside the G human Jesus today, millions have seen him through John's eyes. Centuries later, a Jesus follower named Sundar Singh and said this about knowing Jesus Christ. There are many Christians who do not feel his glorious presence as something real. Only when someone surrenders his heart to Jesus can he find him? Singh knew in his mind who Jesus Christ was, but when he surrendered his heart, he found peace even while he was in prison. That's very true about surrender. How do you know Jesus? Knowing details about his life and ministry isn't enough. When you receive his forgiveness, you can go beyond knowing him to loving him. When you spend time with him in prayer, you can go beyond loving him to sensing his presence. Reflect today on how you can experience his presence in all of your daily moments, the real Jesus longs to hold a place in your heart. <laughs> Why is that making me cry? The real Jesus longs to hold a place in your heart. The end. So we're not going to read the other devotional part. We are done with John. Praise the Lord. That's a lot of Bible reading. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle a, like a chapter a day. That's a lot. It was intense. I, plus, I don't like reading the Bible straight through like a book. I find it not as awesome as when you don't do it that way. But we made it through John. I don't know why. I also signed up this for this thing at church where I'm supposed to like, they're going to read. It's like a Bible reading plan. I hate Bible reading plans. I don't even know why I signed up for this thing. We're, we have to read like certain things on certain. I might not do it. I don't even know. We'll just see how it plays out. But um that's for like it goes for like every day of 2023 like that's intense i don't love the idea of just like reading the bible as somebody else instructs me for an entire year because i prefer to read the bible as the holy spirit instructs me so we'll see i may or may not do this online thing but um That is it. The Chosen season three, episode one is this Sunday night. I told my chiropractor all about it because she asked if I had plans on Sunday. And I told her that I was serving at church and then that Sunday night is The Chosen season three, episode one. <laughs> She's like, what's The Chosen? I'm like, well, you know, it's a Jesus story, but it's really good. And she's like, well, how can you watch it? I'm like, well, you have to just download. I'm like, you just, so I was like, you just download the app and I'm like, they'll, They'll ask you for money, but it's optional. Like, you don't have to pay if you don't want to. And um, how it's in season one and season two are in theaters, etc. So hopefully she'll watch it. I don't know. This woman, not to talk about my chiropractor publicly, but I sometimes wonder if she could use a little Jesus in her life. Like, she just is lacking this joy and she's lacking this peace. And she's a little, for being a chiropractor, where normally they're very, like, holistic and healthy. And, um, I mean, sometimes more, like, spiritual and all of that. Like, she's very stressed and kind of tense and, and dead inside feeling you know I'm like it's weird it's really weird because they don't get that sense normally from like chiropractors and physical therapists normally they are more full of life but I always wonder like about this woman like she's something is she, is she I don't know well I don't know what's wrong but um maybe she'll watch the chosen it's super good so, but I also have my group my on Sunday night, which I would love to skip it and then watch The Chosen instead. Um, but I did skip last week for my Sunday night group, so I don't really want to skip two weeks in a row. 
but I also don't want to miss the chosen so we'll just see what happens but anyway that is enough you have a good day